felt line. You cannot detect like, oh, the, the caller doesn't support um, E722, so I cannot talk to him. I need to hang up because I cannot bridge him to the conference. Uh, I have some ideas on this, and I'll just email the developer's mailing list at some point. As I said, it's not as complete as Meet Me, but uh, it does the job, and it does it pretty well. And I'm sure patches would be welcome to extend the functionality. Then an APP conference, which is the third-party module, it doesn't have a configuration file either, as it doesn't have any option either to, to select the inbound codec. So this has to be done at the asterisk level at some point. And one of the features it has, it, it tries to optimize the, the encoding and the decoding so that it's, it's faster. So if there's only one speaker, it encodes the frames once per, um, per different codec, and then it sends all them out to all the ones that are listening. And if there are two speakers, then it does the same, but it sends the frames from one speaker to the other so that it optimizes the path. It doesn't need to like, go out and in. So this is all about applications. Now I'll, I'll uh, let you know what I tested and how I tested it and what was the result of all this. So what I wanted to know is how these different options perform. We have different conferencing, conference bridges. We have different timing sources. So this has to affect somehow how it works. So I did three tests. I tested APP conference. I tested ConfBridge with timer FD timing. And I tested ConfBridge with pthreads timing with three different scenarios each. One speaker, 50 people listening. Two speakers, 50 people listening. And madness mode, everyone speaking. So 50 people speaking at the same time. So we, I wanted to see how that performed. So the tools I used um, were Pickup Zip Dump. It's a very nice tool similar to TCP Dump, but it only um, saves the zip and RTP part. So you don't need to then be filtering on, on Wireshark, like, oh, this was, this was my SSH session. This is HTTP, whatever you means, packets. This captures only what you need. Then I used Wireshark to uh, edit this capture and take the audio part only. And then I used CP to generate an XML scenario so that it defined the call, the invite, and stuff. And then I used the pickup I captured before to send that audio, which was the James Bond team. Um, then I, the, I used the Sysstat toolkit, which uh, has the ability to, to gather lots of data at a defined interval from the system, like CPU load, memory, disk usage, socket creation, threads, whatever. So I was interested in CPU usage, so that's what I captured. To make the, the graphics that you saw, I used OpenOffice. Don't do that. It sucks big time. But, well, I do it because I feel like it's open source and stuff. And uh, I used uh, my beloved testing tool, which is my ears, because uh, the graphs will show something. But we might see that maybe that's not quite right. There's something more. You need to pay attention and hear. So I did the, all this testing on um, commodity hardware. So this is my, my, my desktop computer without, um, well, I removed um, X um, service. So it was just in console mode. Eight gigabytes of RAM should be just enough to test. 50 people should be bridged like, like OK. And gigabit Ethernet to be sure. So um, the versions I tested were Asterisk Branch 1.8, so Bleeding Edge for ConfBridge, and the 1.6.2 latest release candidate for APP Conference, because as I said, it's not supported on uh, 1.8 yet. So let's see uh, the results. For one speaker, so the colors are the same. So in the case of one speaker, the, the blue curve, it's uh, APP Conference, so it has a Looks like it has a higher CPU usage than the other two. The yellow one is the time uh, is the p threads, and the orange one is timer FD. So looks like the documentation is right. So timer FD performs better than p threads. Then when we have two speakers, then stuff changes a little bit. So the blue curve suddenly becomes like the best choice. So APP conference has the like the best, the lowest CPU usage than the other two. And, but the other two still, they, uh, they'll reflect reality. So timer FD performs better than uh, P threads. And when it comes to 50 speakers at the same time, 
Uh, graphic is pretty much the same, but the difference are the differences are like higher between between um, between all the options. Um, I have to say that when I did this test, the CPU usage wasn't that like crazy. I don't know. I could make the call, and well, it, it felt it just felt right. It felt like it could hold. Now, but that's the raw data. We need to analyze that a little bit because it's not only the CPU usage, it's audio quality as well. So I felt that APP conference had more audio cuts than with my human hear device. It, it felt like I got audio cuts more often than with other options. Uh, there, there were short audio loss with, with um, all the options at some point when the calls start to hit the server. So I hit the server at a rate of two calls per second until I got the, the top, which was 50. And then, then it all stabilized. But the first like two seconds while all the calls are starting to get in, sometimes you got some short audio cuts. It was like tick, tick. But then everything uh, started to feel right. Um, overall, as you might have seen, Timer FD outperformed uh, P threads. So, uh, well, that's what actually the documentation mentions, and well, that's what happened. Um, one thing to mention is that APP conference was tested with a different version. So I don't think this affects much in this matter because the, as it's a third party module, nothing changed internally in, in, in APP conference itself. And as it uses its own timing stuff, um, it's pretty independent. So I think that results are not deceiving into that matter. Uh, one thing to mention as well is that um, with APP conference, as soon as you started adding people and stuff, for some reason, you started getting your CLI flooded with warnings. I don't know if there's something wrong with that. I, did, I could hear quite good or bad, it depended, but uh, I got lots of warnings, so it was impossible to see anything in the CLI. Um, another important thing is that with 50 speakers, an APIP conference outperformed the two of them, but there was no audio at all. <laughs> So then <coughs> looks like, well, it wasn't the right option for, for the 50 people conference. OK, would CPU usage, yet not audio. Well, that's something. And well, as I said, ConfBridge doesn't have as many features as good old MeetMe, nor APP conference. It has, like I don't know, a ton of them. Like, oh, you can select the VAD, or DTMF, whatever. But well, this can be built. The bridge in its just an API, ConfBridge is one application. So. If you need more, you can just implement. So as a, as a recap to what I, I, I learned with this, or what I want to, to let you know, is that uh, why don't can make out our conference call, our calls, uh, more understandable? So I work from my home. I don't go to an office. So I need to talk on the phone a lot. And I don't want to, to be thinking of, of Let's see how this call goes, so this A low or U low or whatever. I want the call to be perfect, and I want to, to just focus on what I'm doing, not on, what, on how am I doing it or how am I communicating. So wideband is like the ultimate tool for this, because, well, you can just feel like you are talking to him face to face. Um, with G722, we use the same bandwidth as with G711, which is important because some people tend to use narrowband codecs because they have just less bandwidth. But if you already use ALO, which for a desktop usage, which is what at least you should do, um, you, just, you use the same bandwidth, yet you have more quality audio. So why not use G722 then? You have hardware phones that implement it, nice SIP clients as well. So there's no point of not doing it. And Asterisk provides all the tools you need to do this. So you have the wideband codecs, you have the conference breaches, you just need the endpoints, but the server part, you got it covered. And from my perspective, coverage looks like the way to go now. MeetMe will be there mixing in Daddy. So if you want wideband, you can't use it. So if you want to do wideband, you go the conference, the coverage way. Um, actually, I don't know APP conference developers, what they do or <coughs> what's the purpose of it right now. But from my tests, well, I had to use uh, Asus 1.6.2 to test it. I got lots of warnings, no audio in that 50 <laughs> speakers call. So 
it was not something I would use for, for my uh, PBX or my uh, conference bridge. And an important note is that we need all hardware devices to support wideband. So no, it's not only about how we mix or how we do in the server side. If you have a headset, a Bluetooth headset, which, only, which can only sample the microphone at 8 kilohertz, then your voice will be transmitted narrow bandly, even if, if it's up sampled to 16 kilohertz. The, the, the samples are just um, make bigger. It's just not that you have more quality. So you need HD enabled hardware as well if you want to have the full wideband experience and that stuff. So um, I signed some 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 paper that I wasn't supposed to do some spam, but I I, I added just one single spam slide. Oh, nice. <laughs> so. Um, I guess you, most of you might know or not, but there is um, each Friday at noon, um, United States time in Europe, it's at 6 p.m., we have the VoIP Users Conference. So there are lots of highly skilled people talking there about VoIP, wideband, uh, technology sometimes, and, and wine as well, depends on, on the timing. And anyone can join, anyone can participate, anyone can speak. And it's, of course, in G722. So it's, uh, you can just, we have a contact for it in Blink. So to download, just click on it, join the conference, see what happens, see if you like it, and do the full um, wideband experience. Actually, with uh, the 50 people conference bridge test was just something I thought about, like, could we do the VoIP users conference in Astros bridge anytime? It looks like if we got the bandwidth, we could, because it hold it up. So, um, just visit the website and join. And that's all I wanted to say for today. So if you got any, any questions or you want to throw something at me, now is the time. Would you use a proxy to select G722 participants so that the conference bridge didn't have to bounce feed to G711 if someone came in at the wrong feed? Since you, Asterisk can't make the decision based on the Yeah, it like cannot make that. Well, currently, you, you cannot select this. but. Um, I have some ideas. So the idea would be to somehow add this information to the existing uh, functions like SIP chain info. So if you got the codec list offered there, you could do the check like, hey, this the, did the, in, the, in, the inbound call support G722? No, then hang up. And you just not get to the conference bridge. Yeah, but, but you want to allow, the, the thing is that you want to allow that guy to use like five codecs, for example including G722, but you want this extension, this precise extension, asterisk 17, to be dialed only with G722. That you cannot do right now. No, you can't because you don't select the codecs by context. You select them by peer or friend or user. Yeah, but you pick it for a peer. I want my peer to dial, to dial you with ALO and this one the channel, whatever, but they want to dial this extension, which is on different contexts, included somewhere. But I, I still need to be able to dial it. You cannot pick it right now. But I guess we will be able to do it in the future. Yep. Uh, what is the difference between Sirium 14 and 17? Um, if I'm, Sirium 14 is a 32 kilohertz uh, wideband codec, so it's even higher. But asterisk only supports 16 kilohertz, so it's down sampled to 16 kilohertz. And currently, it was a, I don't know what's the licensing or stuff between that. I know that it, was, it started at Polycom, and at some point, it, it got opened or something. But um, not many uh, devices beyond Polycom supports it. So my, my choice is G722 because the patent expired. So now it's freely available, you can implement it. And it's, I think it's the most implemented wideband codec out there. So I can actually speak a little bit to that. The Siren codecs were included as free binary add-ons and asterisks donated by Polycom because they're, they are giving it away. It's still under their patent, but they are pretty much allow anybody to build it as long as you sign their documents acknowledging that they actually own the patents and things like that. So, um, and then I saw Jason shaking his head over there. Did you have a comment, Jason? But now it downsamples them to 16, doesn't it? Does it downsample? No, for 
with that? Okay.